We are all hungry people. We need shelter and strength. We are one in our hurting. We are one in our pain. In our suffering and sadness, we are saved by the grace of the power and the Spirit that is here in this place. We are gathered at table as one in the Lord. We are gathered as people who are living the Word. Our hearts and our spirits are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. Good morning, everyone. This morning, July 30th, the church gives us um, an example of a saint. It is the optional uh, memorial, St. Peter Chrysologus, bishop and a doctor of the church. He wants us not to be familiar with Jesus as just a man. He is both man and God. And therefore we pray for the people of our parish. As we remember this is saint also, that we too may not be so much familiar to Jesus and take only one aspect of him as a human being, but also as God. For those moments that we consider the Jesus is only a person. We want now in this Mass to ask the Lord to forgive us by starting our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask a blessed Mary, ever virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who made the bishop, St. Peter Chrysologus, an outstanding preacher of your incarnate word, granted through his intercession that we may constantly ponder in our hearts the mysteries of your salvation and faithfully express them in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, These are the festivals of the Lord, which you shall celebrate at their proper time with a sacred assembly. The Passover of the Lord falls on the 14th day of the first month at the evening twilight. The 15th day of this month is the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first of these days you shall hold a sacred assembly and do no sort of work. On each of the seven days, you shall offer an oblation to the Lord. Then, on the seventh day, you shall again hold a sacred assembly and do no sort of work. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel and tell them, when you come into the land which I am giving you and reap your harvest, you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest. You shall bring to the priest who shall wave the sheaf before the Lord, that it may be acceptable for you. On the day after the Sabbath, the priests shall do this. Beginning with the day after the Sabbath, the day on which you bring the wave offering sheaf, you shall count seven full weeks. <clears throat> and then on the day after the seventh week, the 15th day, you shall present the new cereal offering to the Lord. The 10th of this seventh month, is the Day of Atonement, when you shall hold a sacred assembly and mortify yourselves and offer an oblation to the Lord. The fifteenth day of this seventh month is the Lord's Feast of Booth, which shall continue for seven days. On the first day, there shall be a sacred assembly and you shall do no sort of work. For seven days you shall offer an oblation to the Lord. And on the eighth day you shall again hold a sacred assembly and offer an oblation to the Lord. On that solemn closing you shall do no sort of work. These, therefore, are the festivals of the Lord, on which you shall proclaim a sacred assembly and offer an oblation to the Lord, burnt offerings and cereal offerings, sacrifices and libations, as prescribed for each day. The word of the Lord. Sing with joy to God our help. Sing with joy to God our help. Take up a melody and sound the tremble, the pleasant harp and the lyre. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our solemn feast. Sing with joy to God our help. For it is a statute in Israel an ordinance of the God of Jacob, who made it a decree for Joseph when he came forth from the land of Egypt. Sing with joy to God our help. 
There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. Sing with joy to God our help. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and he taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all of this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. After presenting the Ten Commandments to the Israelites, God, through his servant Moses, gives you again some other instructions how the Israelites should behave knowing that they were still on journey they could forget all those that the Lord has said God continues to remind them to think about God himself to set days for God. And he numbers some of the days which are called festivals, and this should be the festivals for the Lord, not for them. We know in their journey, there are some times they would gather and dance. Sometimes they dance in front of the images they made as their God, forgetting the God who liberated them. So God wants them to be clear, say that, well, as you journey, you need to keep some days and remember me, even when you enter into the promised land. And he numbers the seventh day, you do this, and you shall, you shall not work that is only for the Lord. And Moses comes and tells the people that this is what the Lord has said. And he said these days, therefore are the festivals of the Lord on which you shall proclaim a sacred assembly and offer as an oblation to the Lord burnt offerings, and cereal offerings, sacrifices, 
any liberalizations. The church continues with this to remind us that we have some days which we call holy and festivals. Even if today we have like a memorial or those uh, optional memorial, but it is something to remember something more, to keep us alert of uh, those people who lived following uh, the word of God. They taught about God, about Christ. In a way, God wants people not to be so familiar with God and forget about him, who he is. So this is just to bring to their mind that, okay, today we concentrate on God. This is the day of the Lord. That's what we do on Sundays, what we do on feast days, memorial days, but every day as we come to the church. We want to know God, but not to be so familiar and look at him as somebody else. In the gospel, we are brought again uh, to this event of Jesus going back to his home, to his uh, acquaintance, and he preaches. They wonder about what he preaches, but then they take offense of him because they know him. Probably they are wonder, is he not genuine? Is like to say, this person is bright, but we know how did he come to be bright. We know him. We continue to think of our saying, familiarity brings contact. We don't care of what the person says. We try to care who is this person. And that is the temptation these people of Nazareth had. They couldn't pay attention to what Jesus was teaching and what he was doing. But they said, we know this person. His father is a carpenter. His mother is called Mary. His brothers and sisters are here. What can he tell us? And Jesus felt bad. And he said, there is no one who is not honored except the one who is known by his people and the people with the house. Those who say he is familiar to us, so we cannot uh, listen to what he says. The son of Carpenter, the son of Mary, we know. But what that uh, means, they did not uh, still understand him. The other day I was sharing with somebody and uh, I asked, do you know Jesus? He said, yes. He's a carpenter. <laughs> so I said, only that? I said, yes. I said, no, then you don't know Jesus. Who is he? Jesus is God and also is man. So that time of this Saint Peter Chrysologus, there was this big discussion and a controversy to know whether Jesus is God only or is the only man. Or the two elements are mixed together so he's one person. 
Pope Leo the Great came out and told that Jesus is both fully man and fully God. We should not look at him with one aspect. And this saint went around preaching and emphasizing about this doctrine of the church that God, I mean Jesus, is God and man, fully God, fully uh, man. So in one person, but two natures. And they called him, he was teaching, his words were golden, golden word, worded, because he preached with zeal and standing for this truth. But from that, he talked about the incarnation. This brings us to understand the two natures of, of Jesus, that was born of Mary, and Mary plays part, has got a role in the redemption of the human being by bringing the Savior to us. So Jesus was angry and said, well, he did not do any miracle and he could not continue to teach there because of the lack of faith of his people. Today we have so many things that we can compare that uh, congregation of Nazareth and ours. We can ask a question today, what makes us feel we are familiar with Jesus? And sometimes take him for granted. Many of you probably you know or you follow the program in the ABC channel. There is that a guy who goes around with his mic and asks people, what would you do? So he goes to the bars, to the restaurants, to the buses. Some events are there which shows abuse, oppression, disrespect. And some people would actually look at it and they just are indifferent. They don't do anything. Some, they continue with their meals, with their chatting, etc., as if nothing happens. But there are some who intervene, say, hey, what you are doing is not good. Don't disturb this girl. Don't disturb that person. And this guy says, okay, so what would you do? So some events become so familiar, even if they are negative, they are offenses to some people, but we took for granted. We don't care. But this person wants us to, to be conscious of that and take action of those events, situations where some people are deprived of their rights, where they are oppressed, disrespected. So we need to understand Jesus until we say, this is God. This is also man. Like St. John of the Cross says, we needed to understand what we don't understand. You go down, you deepen, you dig up. What is this, what I don't understand? And Jesus is a mysterious because he's God and man. So we needed to dig up, we needed to 
learn about him, to understand what we don't understand about him. Otherwise, he becomes like us. Well, the scripture says he became like us, but without sin. In our daily practices, we may also practice this familiarity to Jesus. The first reading tells us to keep these days uh, special for the Lord, the festivals for the Lord. We have the Sunday, we have other feasts, solemnities. How do we consider them? Are just ordinary days? We have the celebration in the Mass. Is this uh, the same as we go to the theater? When we go to the theater or to some public uh, events, people dress so nicely. When we come to the church, we say it is normal. Is that not a familiarity to Jesus? When we go to the place of worship, we are taught in catechism and the other uh, religious instruction that we need to respect the temple. When we go to the church, when we go to the temple, we go to meet Jesus because he is always there and we need to keep silence. We should not have discussions uh, beyond the, of the teachings which we are supposed to have in the, in the church. So there are different things that we can say how we are familiar with the Jesus and the environment that we say we are meeting Jesus. Today, I invite you to consider those things. Let us not talk about the people of Nazareth. Let us talk about ourselves. Are we so familiar with Jesus that uh, we look at him and say, we know him. Or still we needed to discover him every day. Peter uh, Chrysologus wanted us to know Jesus in his two natures, but also he wanted people to do penance and be converted. Because penance gives us our nature or explains our nature as human beings who are not perfect. So we need to make penance and we need to confess so that uh, that uh, idea of perfection uh, dwells in us. And this goes hand in hand with the conversion to turn away from one side to the other. I cannot do penance if I don't have the idea of conversion. If I don't want to convert myself, I don't do penance, I don't confess. So this saint has got these teachings. He said, we need to do penance and always we need to desire conversion because in this way only we can be true disciples of Christ who follows Christ, they know, but they are not familiar with him. They know because he is God, 
they know because he is man. He's our teacher. He's our leader. He's our doctor. Has he got so many qualities? We know we need to know all of this. And when we look at him or we want to follow him, we have to take all of this totality of his personhood. The second person of the Trinity. Let us pray that uh, this word which is preached to us may have this sense of being golden worded as it was preached by St. Peter Chrysologus. It's a precious golden word. So we needed to take it as a, something very precious to us or for us and work on it to convert, to do penances, and have great devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us rise. Together in faith, let us present our prayers to the Father. For Pope Francis and all the clergy, May the Holy Spirit be their guide in leading the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may our Heavenly Father grant them wisdom and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are burdened by conflict or violence, May God protect and strengthen them and bring them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all gathered in this holy place, may we trust in our gracious God who knows our every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For all of our dearly departed May God welcome them into their heavenly home and resting place. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of the parish whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. For the special intentions we have in the quiet of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we place our needs before you with a deep faith and a trust through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's law is perfect, refreshing the soul, reviving the weary spirit. God's rule can be trusted, bringing us wisdom, bringing God's wisdom to birth. 
Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, life everlasting. God's precepts keep us, the purpose is right. They gladden the hearts of people. God's command is so clear, it brings us new vision, bringing God's light to our eyes. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, life everlasting. Living by God's truth is holy and sure. God's presence is everlasting. God's truth is eternal, bringing us justice, bringing God's justice to earth. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the power, the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly totally right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, you show us support so that encouraged by so great a crowd of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Sanctus. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excessis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excessis. Make you are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make ye holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dear fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when his supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, John and Ramon, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin, Mar Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Peter, Chrysologolos, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And in the severe command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in your days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us over each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Longing for shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, Shine in your church, gather today. 
Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with the love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. May you have a wonderful day. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.